Do you know what the three most important factors are when investing for your retirement? Well, there are three factors that I like to think of as the three legs of a stool, the stool for retirement. If one of these legs isn't there, the whole thing falls over. You need all three. And these three legs of retirement are time, vehicle, and fees, or I should say lack of fees. And as we'll see throughout the rest of this video, most people never even get the first leg set up. They avoid learning about retirement accounts and how to save and invest for their retirement someday, and just hope that the government's social security is gonna have enough for them. And this is why we are facing a social security and retirement collapse in the coming decades. In fact, if you look at the average 401k balance in the United States by generation, it is absolutely devastating in terms of what it means for what people will be dependent on. Even boomers who have very little time left to earn anything more have a median of only $61,000 thousand dollars in their 401ks. In short, we are facing a retirement crisis in the United States. And in this video, I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to do so that you avoid being lumped in with that crowd, no matter how much you already have, no matter how old you are. So first, let's look at those three legs of retirement, explain those so you understand them. Then we'll go through a three-step process on what you can do to maximize your retirement. So first, time. The number one predictor of wealth, when you look at demographics, it's not race, it's not gender, it's not occupation, it's not last name, it's not family history, it's not color or ethnicity. The top demographic predictor of wealth is age. Statistically speaking, the older you are, the more likely you are to have more wealth. And this makes sense because that's how compounding interest works. The longer you have to save, the longer you have to invest, the more wealth can accumulate, obviously wealth is going to be highly correlated with age. This is not a function of age itself, it is just a function of time. This means that the earlier you get started, the better, and the longer you wait to get started, the worse. Even if you get started with a suboptimal strategy and an approach that is not the best approach, getting started earlier, regardless of the strategy, is better. The second leg of retirement is vehicle. And so what I mean by vehicle is the vehicle that you're using to invest in. For example, if the vehicle that you've chosen is a bank account, a savings account, CDs, your retirement is dead on arrival. Take for example the fact that the national median household income is $70,000. So if you're the median, you earn your 70K for your household, you have to pay the government first, get those taxes paid, and then you have all your bills left over. So after Uncle Sam takes his cut and you pay your bills, let's say you have $20,000 left over because you're living on rice and beans. And let's say you're able to do that consistently for your entire 40 year career. At the end of 40 years, saving up 20 grand every year, you're left with a grand total of $800,000. Now that might sound like a lot, but remember, you're 60 now. You've hit retirement age, you worked from 20 to 40, you've put your 20 grand away every year, and now you've gotta live from age 60 to 90 with what you've saved up, your 800 grand. Do you know how much that is over 30 years? It's only $26,700 per year. And of course, as inflation eats away the value of both our income and our savings, there's absolutely no way you can save your way to retirement someday. It will not work. So choosing the proper vehicle to invest in for retirement is absolutely vital. And then the third leg of retirement is fees. Because in your average retirement account, you have a fee on the account, and then you have built-in fees that are invisible in every single investment choice, the mutual fund inside that retirement account, which means that if you would have averaged, let's say, 8% performance, by the time all the fees are taken away, you're only left with 6 maybe even 4%. Just a 2% difference in fees, as Vanguard points out, could take the same 100 grand that you invest and be the difference between it being worth $160,000 or $330,000 just what you lose to the fees. So minimizing your fees is absolutely essential if you want your retirement to be there for you someday. 
So what do you need to do in order to fix this? Well, first of all, I wanna let you know that everything that we're talking about in the rest of this video comes from my brand new course that just dropped on Retirement Account Mastery. And this course is obviously available to people who are members of Heresy Financial University because they get access to every single course automatically that drops. And if you can believe it, everything in this video is just a very tiny bit that is in that course. And so if this is helpful to you, you know where to find more, join as a member of Heresy Financial University. That'll be linked in the description below. So the first step that you need to take is consolidate. You have to figure out where all of your retirement accounts currently are. Most people are not aware that there are retirement accounts that they left behind from past employers. I can't tell you how many people that I've spoken with that thought that once they left a job, that that 401k they left behind just belonged to the company. It doesn't. It's yours. You can go find it. You can call them. You can have them send you a check or better yet, don't have them send it to you, have them send a check to your new retirement account. That way you avoid any taxable consequences whatsoever. By the way, guys, I'm going to be speaking at the Stock Pulse Silver Symposium about the history and future of sound money. It's in Las Vegas from September 29th through October 1st. There's going to be a ton of other great speakers there. There are going to be plenty of opportunities for us to do meet and greet, hang out, get some drinks together. I'd love to meet you there. And uh, everybody who shows up is going to get one ounce of silver as well, a one ounce uh, silver coin. So I'd love to see you there. There's a discount link, 10% off in the description below. So sign up there, get that discount and tickets are running out. So sign up soon. There's a few reasons that you want to consolidate. Number one, it's going to make it easier for you to manage. But number two, it's going to help you get into the proper vehicles, leg number two of retirement, and take care of the fees, leg number three of retirement. Most people aren't aware, but once you leave your job, many times new fees start hitting your retirement account because you're no longer employed there. And so the free retirement account that you have no longer applies. You'll start getting charged just for that custodian to hold on to your retirement account. So as soon as possible, you want to call up the custodian, whether it's Vanguard or Fidelity or Schwab or whoever it was, and have them send it over to your new retirement account. Number two, once it's all consolidated and either with your current employer or with an individual retirement account that you can manage anywhere you want, you need to figure out how these accounts are being invested. I can't tell you how many people I have spoken with who have an individual retirement account, an IRA, that they manage. It's a self-managed account. And they've been contributing to these accounts for years, and they had no idea that they had to choose how it was going to be invested. It's been sitting in cash for years, and they were missing out on a bull market for years, having way less money now as a result of just not being invested. Because they thought, all I have to do is open the account, put money in. That's not the case. You also have to choose how it's going to be invested. Now that's for an IRA. For a 401k, usually the default is that they will be invested for you. And unfortunately, this is not optimal either because they're going to choose investments for you that are high fees and suboptimal performance. Nine times out of 10, the default investment choice is going to be something called a target date fund. So they take a look at how old you are and they say, okay, if you're going to retire, let's say in the year 2060, then we're going to be investing your funds in a way that will become more conservative so that it's basically all in bonds and cash by that date that we think you're going to retire. But even for those of you with a very long time horizon, picking a target date that is very far away, there will still be way higher of an allocation to bonds than you should probably have. Now, I've talked about bond performance at length in previous videos, but one of the main problems with this is that you're taking on one of two forms of risk with bonds. You're either taking on inflation risk or you're taking on deflation risk. Right now, the yield on the 20-year U.S. Treasury is 4.4%. Now, that is not high compared to the inflation rate and historically speaking if you look back more than a couple decades if you look back over the course of a century but what's most important about this is that the US government actually can't afford this interest rate the longer the interest rate stays here the closer and closer the US government gets to defaulting their debt load is so high that if they have to start paying four or five percent on all their debt they just won't be able to afford it now you and I both know that they probably won't default they'll just choose to to print the money to pay for it. In which case that 4%, the risk you're taking on is inflation risk. Because once the government starts to print money through the Fed in order to pay for its debt, 
that means inflation is going to pick back up again. So we really are between a rock and a hard place with bonds. We've got default risk on one side, inflation risk on the other. And as Sober Look pointed out on Twitter recently, retail purchases of TLT, which is the 20 year US government bond ETF, have reached all time highs. So right as the risk of either default or inflation reach levels that they haven't been in many decades in the United States, retail money, small money, dumb money, is rushing in to these bond funds at record paces. And the final problem with the default investment choices that your 401k is gonna choose for you is the expensive fees on the funds that they choose. When you open up your 401k, you will have a choice on what types of investments to choose. They're gonna give you money market funds, which is cash. They're gonna give you target date funds, which we've already discussed. They're gonna give you bond funds, which we've already discussed. And then the funds that are invested in stocks, which I would personally, my opinion, say that those would be the proper vehicles to be in, they're gonna have expensive ones and they're gonna have cheap ones. They're invested almost identical to each other, but one of them is gonna have higher fees. And those fees are gonna take care of the third leg of that stool to make sure that you get the most out of your retirement. And because I know some of that will be considered basic to some people who already know all of that, I want to give two bonus tips, two little kickers that most people are not aware that they can do with their retirement. Things you can do to absolutely maximize the amount that you have in retirement someday. Number one, you can do a self-directed option with both your 401k and your IRA. They work very differently, so we'll go with the 401k first. When you call up your 401k custodian, whether it's Vanguard, Schwab, Fidelity, whoever holds your 401k, call them and ask them, do I have something called a personal choice retirement account or a self-directed 401k option? Many, many times this is available within your plan and they don't tell you about it. You have to proactively ask. The reason this is important is because instead of just choosing from the list of 12 mutual funds you have available to you, they will give you the option to invest in anything. You just have to check the box that it's self-directed. At that point, then you can choose your own stocks, you could choose ETFs, and many times you can even get approved to do basic option strategies like hedging with puts and income strategies strategies like selling covered calls. It's like strapping a rocket onto the engine of your 401k. Most people have no idea this is available. Now with an IRA, you have a self-directed IRA available to you as well, except it unlocks even more doors than the self-directed 401k. With a self-directed IRA, you are able to invest in literally anything except a few things that the IRS prohibits. Inside your IRA, you can invest in things like gold, Bitcoin, real estate, private equity, startups, and this is exactly how Peter Thiel became a billionaire inside of a Roth IRA, completely tax-free, because he used a self-directed IRA to invest in a private company. And everybody can do that, you included. And then the final tip is going to be to use a Roth strategically. And I know that many of you are high income earners and think you're priced out of using a Roth. There's something called a backdoor Roth conversion. Most people aren't aware, but if you make too much, you can't put money directly into a Roth IRA. And so what many people do is just put money into the traditional IRA instead. But what the IRS allows you to do is a conversion from a traditional IRA to a Roth IRA. So even if you earn too much, you earn 200,000, 300,000, 400,000, doesn't matter. You put your money into your traditional IRA and immediately move it from there into the Roth IRA. This is called a backdoor Roth contribution. It's entirely legal. Anybody can do it, no income limits. And so if you're a higher income earner and you wanna make sure that you're still contributing to your retirement account and you get that tax-free growth and you don't ever have to pay tax on anything you take out of your retirement in the future, you can utilize the backdoor Roth contribution. Hopefully this was helpful because we are facing an absolute retirement apocalypse in this country and all almost everybody is nowhere near prepared enough. Fortunately, there are some very simple steps that everybody can take to maximize the amount that they have in their retirement without even contributing more. Just whatever you're already doing, you can change some things and it'll end up with more money later on. And if all this was helpful to you, there's much more packed into my brand new retirement accounts course because that's where this all came from. And for all of you who are members of Heresy Financial University already, you already have access to this course and every single other course that is part of my membership. If you're interested, sign up with the link in the description below. As always, thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.